Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we dive into the Arizona numbers and try to make sense of it all so that you can have all the knowledge you need and so that you can equally be a hit at all the cocktail parties. A lot of numbers out there. A lot of them make sense. A lot of them don't make sense. And everybody's trying to make an educated guess, and I'm going to attempt to do the same thing. So what we do here is we look at headlines, and then we drill down and look at actual numbers in the Arizona market. And sometimes there's a huge gap. Sometimes it just validates what the headline says. So do me a favor and hit that like button because uh, you did yesterday and uh, today uh, the wind stopped. So that's good news. <laughs> so, um, seven day moving average. Right now we have 5,000 homes on the market and the blue lines here um, represent the number of listings that have come on the past seven days. And the red line is number of homes that have gone under contract. And you can see now there's a gap. <clears throat> that gap's about 650 homes right now, which is larger than what we've seen pretty much all year. <clears throat> but to put it in perspective, even though the gap is growing and sales are coming down, first and foremost, this is our peak season right now. So this red line should be right up here. But with the hike in the interest rates, it isn't. Because here you can see over here on the yellow line that that's last year. So... You know, last year in March and April, um, we were peaking above the number of homes that were coming on the market. So uh, that was driving prices up. Now it now we've got a little bit of a gap, and uh, so but nothing nothing major. And the green line here is the lowest number of contracts that we've ever had, which is about two thousand seven hundred. That's an all time low. So I put that there for reference. So when you look at the number of homes going under contract we're kind of where we've been but we're lower when we compare it to where we should be seasonally now in our spring selling and buying market now some of the headlines that are out there are saying that there's a lot of uh, price drops a lot of price drops everybody's panicking so if you're considering selling your home what do you make of this um, are there so many price decreases that perhaps maybe now's the time to put your home on the market we're going to look at that and hopefully at the end of this uh, video this live stream you'll you'll get a good idea of, of of where we're at because it's really all over the map now i do want to clarify there's a big difference between a price reduction and our sales prices going down because right now that sales prices are still not going down but what you're seeing is you are seeing people that thought well i can get 525 for this well, it turns out they can't. <clears throat> Maybe the house is only worth 500, and so the market's telling them, "Well, you're not going to get 525." So they got to pull it back. Now, selling it for 500 is probably still 25 percent higher than last year. So that's not a reduction in the sales price. It was a reduction in the asking price, and it can get kind of confusing. Redfin here says housing market update: share of sellers dropping their asking price climbs past last year's rate. We're going to look at that and see if we're seeing the same thing. 12% of homes for sale had price drops in the past four weeks, the highest level since early December, suggesting that seller's tight grip on the market is starting to loosen. So they're saying that they're starting to see more homes drop their price. Now to take that with a grain of salt, let's look at what Redfin said 2022 was gonna be like. They predict more balanced housing market in 2022. Here's the funny part. <clears throat> Prediction number one, right off, right out of the gate. Mortgage rates will rise to 3.6%, bringing price growth down to earth. Kind of missed that one. We're sitting at 5.15 this morning on a national average. <laughs> so anyway, that, uh, that didn't work out too well for him. Prediction number two, new listings will hit a 10-year high, which will hardly make a dent in the ongoing supply shortage. Now, we've still got a long way to go in 2022. Maybe this is going to happen. That's why we track it. Uh, we're only at 5,000 listings today. Um, so 10-year high, we got, a, we got a high ladder to climb there, folks. So what I want to do is I want to look at what our actual price cuts in the Arizona market. Hello, Kellogg. Um, so if I go and I look at the, the Cromford report, and this is number of price changes, okay? But I want to look at price cuts. But before I do that, here's where we're at. This is 568 
changes. Some people raise the price, the majority of them lower the price, and you'll see that. And you put this in comparison to last year. Well, heck, we were a lot higher last year. Um, and we've been a lot higher years past. This is uh, 2020, 2020, 2021. Look at the price changes. But we look at the price cuts per week and by day. Now, let me explain this chart. <clears throat> this chart has uh, orange down here, which is Sunday. Green is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You can see that the majority of price cuts that people put in, they do on a Friday. That's kind of a well, duh, right? They do it on Friday because they want their home, their new price cut to show up for the weekend when most people are out looking for homes. <clears throat> you can see here that our price cuts on this week is only 72 homes. That's not a big number. Go back to September of 2021, we had 338. Is it going up? Yes, it's going up. It's not an alarming number though. So it's going up. It's kind of like foreclosures. Foreclosures are up 65%. Well, we don't have more than a handful out there. So, you know, a high percentage of a small number is a small number. But here's the kicker. If we look, and I'm looking at uh, our highest increase in listings right now, and price cut activity is happening between $500,000 and $600,000. But if we look at Still, closed sales over listing price on this chart, that spiked up. This is current. This is April. Uh, total number of sales, 2705 percent sales over list, 57 percent. That hasn't backed off. Kind of expecting that to happen. Um, and if you look at the 500 to 600,000 range, there were 1,100 homes that sold with an average of 56 percent of them going above their list price and 500 to 600,000 with the average being... $21,000 above their list price. So we're seeing an uptick in people reducing their price, but we're not seeing any downward trend yet in the actual bidding wars. Um, there is some, it is slowing down out there, don't get me wrong, but we're not seeing anything here locally when you look and you compare that chart and you compare the number of price reductions that we're having now versus in months and years past, nothing jumps out that says, hurry up, put your house on the market right now. Um, now, the inflation report that came out this morning is absolute, absolutely horrendous, 11.1%. But you know what? It, it didn't move the bar on mortgage rates yet as of this morning. That could happen. We could get uh, something uh, show up that's you know going to make the rates go even even higher, but uh, so with that being said, Redfin had an article, what advice would you give to home buyers and sellers right now? What are the economic indicators that could predict a recession? And basically Redfin's economists, remember these are the ones that said, we're gonna level out if rates go to 3.6. If you're a buyer, don't try to time your decision based on recession speculation. I would look more at your own personal financial situation. Ask yourself if you'd still be able to afford the home if you lost your job, because that's what happened. everybody wants a crash. I want a crash. Well, you probably want your job too. Um, how long would you be able to maintain those mortgage payments? If you're considering selling a home, I would ask yourself those same question. If you think your budget is going to be significantly stretched if you hold on to the home, now may be a good time to sell. They're not predicting one way or another if there's going to be a recession, although there's certainly some storm clouds looming. Um, but it all depends on, on you. And that's why I kind of gave you that mortgage calculator a while back and said, do your own personal reflection and look back and say, if home prices dip 10%, but mortgage rates go up a percent, what does it mean to the payment? What's that mean to me? And you really need to take a, a close look at your own personal finances. How much money... Should I have in reserve if a recession happens? And what is a recession? A recession is um, two quarters of negative growth. Right now, I think our GDP is up about 8%. So if we turn around and have two quarters of negative growth, then that's, uh, that's job losses. That's, that's bad stuff. But many of the numbers that we're looking at are showing maybe next year. But who knows? I mean, um, 
China is probably a bigger problem for us than uh, just because of supply chain. I mean, they've got Shanghai just completely shut down. They're not even letting people out of their homes and people are screaming out of their balconies because they need food. It's really a dire situation. It's interesting. It's a strain of COVID. They've had no deaths, but uh, they don't want uh, they don't want people out walking around. So they're just saying you better stay inside. What that does in Shanghai, we still buy a lot of stuff from Shanghai, especially chips. And uh, so our supply chain situation isn't getting any better, and that's going to ripple. Um, so interest rates, as they are climbing up, have the potential for colliding with another supply chain problem and inflation going even more bonkers than it is right now. Um, so it, it could get really, really ugly. Is inflation good for real estate? It has been because you're going to pay off today's debt with tomorrow's dollar. So, you know, there's an argument to be made that maybe it's a good time to buy. But what I do on this channel is just try to show you where we're at in relationship to the headlines that you're reading. And the headlines that we read right now said that the price reductions are higher than they've been since December. Well, they are, but like that so far. And as I went back and just kind of did a general peeling back of the onion, looking at the multiple listing service this morning, I could see why some of them pulled, some of them pulled back. I saw one that's been on the market for 21 days and they reduced it by $5,000. And I looked at it and I compared it and said, well, they started out too hot anyway. I think they were asking five, ten, And when you look at the house, I mean, as soon as you pull up the thumbnail, look at it, that's not a house I'd pay five ten for. Now, that whole house has probably gone up in value from 400000 to four fifty uh, this year. And, but they got cocky and said, I'm going to sell it for five ten. Well, it didn't work out, so that's a price reduction. But guess what? It's still worth more than it was last year. So there's always devil in the details. So I hope that clears things up. Do me a favor, smash that like button before you leave and take on the day and have a good rest of the week. Mm -hmm.